and burn the far pot man, Australia. The Shed Eater. Once upon a time, there was a shed. And all around the shed was a bushy background with the seaside. And beside the shack was a boat shed where I would work on the kindling while my mother and sister were to run the insides of the shack. One day, when I was not about, the place was still very messy. As the grass always grows in nature, as usual, there were the tire, the solid rock, rock, and the kindling shed. We don't call it a toilet roof anymore. And outside it was a log. Hello! There they were, resting in the sunshine. The little log looked all about him. And when he saw that everything was quiet, he knocked on the kindling booth. Wake up, Bill, Ben. The flower pot men came out when they heard him say it was time to get out of bed. We haven't explored something not seen from us. Yeah, what Ben said. We looked in the shack, but what can we look at? The two of them asked the log. Look in the boat shed. You haven't looked there. They had a look and saw that the door to where I worked was open ajar. I wonder where we can look in there, said Bill. It's never explored much of a look, said Ben. So they went inside, and guess what they found? That's right, it was a small heater that I use in winter times. There was a line of words which were for one reason. It said, Warning, do not cover. They wondered if they could see how it works and didn't want to put anything on it. There was a cord to a box which they saw was full of plug holes and on them were switches which were switched on. Look! Ben suddenly turned away and saw another shed heater. Why, Bill, look, there's another heater, and it's an old one. It has a cog and a red stick. They had a look at the old heater, wondering how it works. It didn't have a warning sign though they knew not to play with it. It suddenly spoke up. I wouldn't like to fiddle with it if I were you. It was not the heater. It was a stick that spoke up. A matchstick. Oh, hello. We didn't see you. We didn't fit with the heater. This heater used to work. It was to warm the shed, but the fumes could cause a stir, so 
The man used that modern one instead. Who are you? I'm Bill. I'm Ben. We're Farpot men. And we came here by car. I haven't been moved for years. I've been here. For years. No one has put me in where I would be stored. I'm coal dust, by the way, and I might need to be put in the bin. Will you take me? Mm, of course we can. We haven't done a clean-up. They took the matchstick to a bin outside the woodshed and went back to the log. All this time, the log had been watching. He knew which of the Frapot men that found a matchstick. Listen to his question song. Was it Bill or was it Ben? Found a small matchstick just then. Which of those two Frapot men was it Bill or was it Ben? Was it Bill or was it Ben? It was both of them. That's the last thing they were exploring. That's the last thing we're exploring today. Ben? Yeah. And they told the log about what they did, exploring the last thing. Hello, you two. Enjoyed the last thing you explored? Yes, we did. We found two things, pizzas. They were a cord one and a cordless one. But we found a matchstick that was here. We put him in the bin. Matchsticks? Oh, I'm glad I didn't get burnt. I like living here, so I could see what the wildlife has. Suddenly, they heard me coming back. The Farpot men said goodbye and went back to the car. The log went to sleep. There he was, resting alone. But I didn't know about the matches that had disappeared until I looked in the bin to see where it had ended up. After I looked on the old heater, nobody in Wedge Avenue ever knew about the Frapot men. Only you saw them play, and the little log, and I think the shack knew something about it. Don't you?